Yeah, the, uh, one of the most satisfying things is trying to sell uh, cultural change to a development organization from, from the QA position. And, and uh, an example are our approach to fault insertion. Um, it, and, and it falls on the observation that I made earlier that, that you know, 95% of your, your code is handling errors or handling errors while you're handling errors and recovery strategies. Um, and if this is time and the bug frequency, um, when you first get a release, you don't really need any help. The main line is unstable, and it's triggering error handling code paths like crazy. So you really don't need any help. But at some point, the main line stabilizes. And at that point, the bugs start to tailor off. And geez, I had all of these bugs last week, but now I've got nothing. You know? <laughs> and, and you just know those error handling code paths have not stabilized, but you just can't get at it. You can't materialize that. And at some point, a manager, not Ambika, of course, will say, oh, time, it's time to ship. That's enough bugs. It's <laughs> low enough. We're going to ship. And you don't have any way of getting at this, this huge pile of bugs that you just know were there. They added a ton of recovery code, and there's just no way to get at it. And so what we have here are little fa faults. We think of them as little knobs and, that you can turn. So how many, how many out of memories would you like today? How many bad blocks would you like today? How many errors out of this particular interface would you like today? Uh, how many network drop packets would you like today? And so QA has overt controls over these things. Once the main line stabilizes, well, I can turn on the faults and just pump as much as I want through what is 95% of my code pass instead of 5% or 1% of my code pass. So that overt control is huge. And you know, when, I'm sure it's happened to every one of you um, that, what did I do yesterday? You know, I, I, I did A and then I did B. I can't reproduce this. And I did C and then, I, what else? What did I do? You know, you don't, with, with overt control of your error handling code paths, you can uh, go right back to the same mix of faults at the same frequencies. And you know, nine times out of 10, reproduction is a snap. And, and, and if it took me a thousand fault insertions to hit a problem uh, and then somebody gives me a fix, I can pump 10,000 in and, and, and make sure it's really fixed. So, and, and so when you institutionalize things like that and say, okay, now developer, uh, A, you have to, uh, before you can check in this feature, you gotta tell me, you have to agree with, negotiate with QA what faults you're gonna deliver along with this code so that it's testable by an external party. And um, so that you know, you combine the wonderful automation with a fault insertion subsystem, and something that allows you to get over all of these um, tests in all the environments that you want, and you end up with uh, something that is able to cover vast amounts of code in short periods of time. And that that was my the that's the conjecture that I laid out earlier. Whoever can test the most code pass in the most environments in the shortest period of time. You know, sometimes they come to you and say, you got 24 hours, we got to get this fixed out to the field. Do what you can. And, you know, with that, you can really, um, you can really, um, with, with this sort of technology and, and with, with development kind of buying into the strategy, uh, you can achieve great things.